Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the first ever Theme Park Tycoon 2 interview. This is sort of an impromptu thing we've just done here. Um, I was working with uh, Major Joey here, who you might know from my previous video, has joined the Bunker Challenge, and uh, I wanted to talk with him about... So we, were, we were talking earlier about our sort of building processes and how we get ideas, and I thought it'd be interesting to turn that into a sort of series. So. As long as I can get people to talk to, I'll try to continue this series, and um, we'll have more episodes for this for you. But this will be sort of the main episode. This will be sort of the guide for most episodes, hopefully, if it goes well. Um, Joey, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey guys, um, my username on Roblox is Major underscore Joey, and... Uh, yeah, like Wimp said, I'll basically just be talking about my building process. Maybe I can help some of you guys out. And uh, we can get into it now. All right. So um, let's describe like, what type of builder are you in sort of theme park taken to? You have a very specific style. Uh -huh. I would describe myself as mostly a fantasy builder. I also like realistic architecture. But I, it's always a custom scene at the very least. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I um, I like to incorporate a variety of things. So like I might combine real life architecture styles with like fantasy nature or ambience. Like obviously you're not going to find blue and purple lights in a forest in real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless it's a magical forest. But that's not in real life. That's sort of a fantasy thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, so um, I want to go through sort of your theme park journey. So how you started and then how you got to where you are today. So uh, when did you start playing Roblox? I started playing Roblox in 2018, late 2018. And for the most part, I played like anime fighting games or shooters or odd, basically just a variety of games like most roblox beginners i did also try theme park tycoon when i first started because it wasn't the recommended yeah. but i do not consider that the start of my building career because obviously i wasn't immersed in the community yet yeah. and um when, when did you find theme park tycoon 2 um probably near when i first started playing but when i found theme park tycoon and like really got into it was mid summer of 2020 mm. so like june july and that's when i started getting into the community and getting inspired and realizing hey i like to build stuff yeah and when where did you sort of get your inspiration from back then at least i mean i was surrounded by great builders so i kind of just had ideas pop up in my head and i did them like for example I attempted many things as I still do, constantly starting new projects like a western saloon, a sci-fi tunnel, a, a jungle, things like that. Yeah, it seems like to me, and this is not meant to be like an insult or anything, but it seems like to me you you sort of build on like a smaller scale, but you make that smaller thing very detailed. So like, yeah, you, when you talk about the saloon or like a tunnel you know if you don't if you haven't seen joey's built you wouldn't know what that sort of oh, i'm talking about but it's like incredibly detailed i mean you're you're very proficient with a uh, no snap which, which is, you. yeah you were so, we were sort of talking about that earlier um did you like start out doing no snap or how would you how did you just like start out building well i started off with no game passes because i wasn't really like into the game yet of course but what happened was i met this insane builder in a server and i was like whoa 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 hold up this dude is how did he do this so of course i discovered no snap and the community and i started running into other good builders on public servers i joined and that's kind of just how i got into it at first yeah do you remember who and that then, was who it was like that yeah actually you? Disney guy 33 was the first Roblox user I found who was exceptional at the game. And um he had a really nice coaster that he made. 
But um, yeah. So. And so that inspired... after that, I just kept running into more and more good builders. And yes, you're right. I did start off building no snap. I was not immersed in theme bar tycoon at the time that default snap was the prominent or the only style. Right. Yeah. Because well, you didn't have any of the game passes at that point either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's very different from how I started because I started. When I started, there were, I think the only Game Pass was the uh, Jukebox Game Pass. So, and so, and, and we talked about this earlier, but when I started, I started early 2017. And back then, there was Default Snap, and there was no Disable Collisions. So, the bar was a lot lower in terms of what was considered impressive. And I also talked about how you know, my older builds, they looked impressive for the time, but I sort of go back and I look at them and I sort of cringe because it's like, this looks so old and it, it looks underdeveloped. But you were, you were talking earlier about how it's not necessarily, you know, detail, but also passion that can sort of make a build good. Do you want to uh, talk about that? Oh yeah, definitely. Like if you're, you can tell when someone's passionate about a build, it'll have, you know, like super creative designs. You can just kind of tell when a build comes from the heart because it'll, first off, if you put a lot of Easter eggs and stuff in your build, that means you really want to be an experience. That's why I love builders who do that because it just adds so much more to the build and like secret areas and stuff like that. Yeah. I love adding stuff like that. I mean, I think it That's adds, why I love your build. Yeah, it, it makes it interesting to explore. I like making parks that people can explore, you know, or builds it. Mm -hmm. And even though you stick mostly with defaults now, you're you're very you're very like pro proficient in default snap techniques. Like you have good building skill. Even though you might prefer to start shifting over to no snap. Okay. Yeah, so what was the biggest project that you ever worked on? I know you constantly talk about how you don't complete projects, but what was the biggest thing you like ever built? The most progress I've ever made on something was, like I said, I mean, I'm extremely... The, the reason I did... Okay, I'll just answer the question first, but it was a sci-fi park. I was probably like 0. 0.3 to 0. 0.4. So this was around this time but a year ago so like winter of 2021 when i made these three really big parks and they were like the three biggest parks i've made of course i might have made bigger ones like afterwards but i don't really remember these were the ones that like stood out and i i was consistently hitting like 0.3 to 0.4 megabytes on the data limit which is a lot for me and the first one was like a sci-fi base you kind of just were going through a series of tunnels. The second one was a sort of like fantasy adventure type map. You know, you had big mountains, you had some magic floating crystals and stuff. And the last one was basically this library with a lot of like tiles in front of it. And it also had a lot of underground secret areas and a mountain range in the back. So. And the reason I delete all my parks is because basically when I started out, like I'm, I mean, like I'm not, I'm not dumb. I can tell like when a builder's good, even though I wasn't experienced at the game. So I had my standards raised to this ridiculous level before I could even hope to achieve it. So I was constantly deleting parks because it was never good enough for me, even though I wasn't actually capable of producing what I wanted. So that's why I've made more and more progress as I've gotten better because more things have like pleased me as a builder yeah that, that definitely makes sense to me as well i mean this is something i i try to fight with especially i mean i i, I made my own group and i i want to push just like having fun with the game because i think improving with the game is certainly a good thing but like not at the cost of you actually like enjoying your experience or actually finishing something you know 
Yeah, I totally agree. That's something I regret deeply. I wish I had never deleted my parks. Don't delete your parks, guys. Even though it's kind of hypocritical of me to say. Yeah. Because first off, just from a purely logical standpoint, they are a great way to document your progress or like see things you can improve on. Like if you get better and you start to recognize better, like you can start like to notice things you can improve on. You could go back and see like, oh yeah, I was really bad at that in that park. It's just like purely for documenting your pr progress as a builder. But yeah. also from a personal standpoint, you might want it for the nostalgia or something. Because I took screenshots of almost none of my builds. And that's why I was wow. so happy when I found out that you took screenshots of a few of mine. That was really cool. Yeah, I I really wish I hadn't deleted my uh, first two parks. Because I remember the first two parks I built. I mean, they were very basic, but they were like, they had like different themes to them and different little areas and i wish i could explore those areas again just to relive the memories that would be really nice mm -hmm. and you kind of went over that in that uh fantastic video of yours about why you love theme park tycoon where you showed like um you know the little multi-themed areas that you had and all the themes you could build in this game it was it was a great like you um represented this game well yeah thanks Okay, one one thing I really want to get to like the heart of is how we go from having an idea in our head and actually executing it in the game or in any sort of art form. I think that's sort of fascinating to me. So it's describe like how once you get an idea or how you get an idea, you talked about the ideas versus designs. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit, but how you go from having something in your head to making it in the game? What is your sort of process with that? Well, so designs versus ideas. First off, ideas are like an entire plot, like a theme you might want to make, and then you compile it all into a perfected, like, like for example, say you want to make an enchanted forest. You come up with a layout, you know, maybe you want a mountain range in the back. A so an enchanted forest would be the inspiration. Like that's the theme, the general theme you want. And then you perfect it into an idea. Like where do you want this forest in relation to other things in the park you might have, like a mountain range. And then designs are like the individual things that you have within the idea. Like obviously you have to have a tree design since it's an enchanted forest. And for ideas, you basically just gotta get inspired. Like what have you always wanted to see? Like for example, I always thought it'd be really cool to see like a really big grand structure in theme park tycoon because i've never seen like a super big grand detailed structure so i thought a cathedral might be cool but uh yeah so for ideas you really just gotta get inspired yourself you know maybe look up some art there's plenty of amazing art out there for designs okay so i suggest if you're a beginner start out by um References, 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 references. Because let me give you an example. Say you want to make a tree. You look up a tree. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it has cylinders in it. But it's obviously not going to be a perfectly round cylinder. Like there's some parts that stick out more than others. So you might want to make the tree trunk consist of a few cylinders. And then, you know, you make the roots curve, you make the branches a bit smaller cylinders than the trunk. And you just go from there and you make like smaller branches splitting off and you make the bushes and eventually after recreating that first tree after that you have your own tree design and then you can make custom trees because you know how to like recreations help with interpreting real life things and making them in theme park tycoon so like you learn what items look good for what and after, from there you can make your own style yeah, that's that doesn't make sense. I, I've said before I don't really do recreations because I think I think it certainly helps a lot more with like uh, no snap than it would with my stuff. Although I'm not saying it wouldn't help, but you talked like earlier about no snap and how how you sort of you know go from a reference image and how different shapes fit different you know objects. I don't want to like. Uh, oh yeah, let me. My bad. 
let me like elaborate because that wasn't as good as how I explained it before. Yes. I'm gonna eat your Sorry. words, not mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But basically, like, of course, I support creativity over like just, of course, you can always build what you want, but like, I'm more impressed with a pro uh, project that shows creativity than recreations. But what I was saying is, reference is help in the beginning. Because, yeah, like, like you just said, um, you kind of start to build block familiarity, like what looks good with what. And from there, you can like develop your own designs. Like when you're making a tree, eventually it just becomes a reflex. Oh, yeah. Cylinders look good for this. Does that like explain it? A little yeah. Bit? Yeah. And in terms of inspiration, something I found to be very helpful is sort of, I mean, something I like to do is go on like walks and sort of just thinking to yourself, having some time to yourself, come up with ideas. And then I have like a, a notebook and I'll just write these ideas down sort of as they come up in my brain. And then even if they're just terrible ideas, at least you have something written down. And I like, I, I, I know people who have like entire parks planned out in paper. I mean, I'm not that kind of guy, but I do write down so i had a project it was called you know the abandoned city and me and my friend pipo super what we did we came up with a bunch of you know rooms and buildings that we wanted to build and we made just a giant list and then when we couldn't come up with any more ideas we're like well let's refer it back to the list do you have any sort of like preparation before you start building something that you do to uh, prepare well, sadly, I mean, yes, I can describe like what a good preparation project, project, a good preparation um, sequence would be, but I personally don't do it much, which is why I end up doing a lot of my builds. But I highly recommend doing that. So usually, what I do, which I actually do do this sometimes, is I compile a basic list of things. I'm okay. What style of nature do I want? Do I want to be fancy? What color like lighting do I want? What kind of trees do I want? What like ambience do I want? Do I want to be like kind of dead and abandoned? Or do I want to be, you know, like alive or, or mystical? In which case I'd use like purple and blue lighting, like I mentioned earlier, for like an enchanted forest. And then I decide what type of structures I want. Like, cause like I said, I like well-rounded stuff. You know, I want structures and nature in my build. So I'll be like, well, what style of architecture do I want? And then, you know, I'll make my own designs for the architecture. Might use a few references, but then I'll like convert it to like theme park tycoon since obviously you're not going to be able to make something from your life look the same as theme park tycoon. So you kind of have to interpret it and make your own designs. So I kind of compile a basic list of like styles of things I want. And then um, my friend does the same thing. If we want to go really far and really plan, we'll decide basic structures that we want. Like, hey, I might want this type of house over here. Hey, I might want a lake over here. And then if I'm feeling very, um, if I really feel like planning, I'll put those structures on like a map, like just like a piece of paper or something. Wow, yeah. And I'll just make like a square that represents the plot, the theme park taking plot. And I'll just draw stuff like mountain range here. Um, and then I'll like maybe outline it with my pencil a little bit. So yeah, basically I just say first figure out the themes you want, then figure out the individual structures you might want, and then assemble a layout from that possible. Yeah, I've I've done that. I've done the thing where like draw out what I want and where I want it with like a square before, but I've like never followed it. Every time I do that one, I just don't follow it through with it. I don't know why, because I'm just like bad at following through with. Uh like diagrams uh-huh or you just come up with like better ideas as yeah. you go and change your minds and that happens yeah i think something very very important you talked about earlier when you mentioned like one of the first things you think about is the sort of ambience or like the feeling you want to invoke with your building and that's something i, I get like heavily from your work is you're very good at making something feel some sort of way you know whether it be like sad or sad and dead and, or sort of like mysterious and i think that's a very important aspect of a good build 
is sort of setting the atmosphere. You know, you go to, for example, my abandoned city. That's something I really wanted to do, was make it look, you know, very somber. We we have, you know, elements of like memories. So we'll have like people. They've got like family pictures, while the whole house is like trashed. And it's it's so it's all about telling a story. At least with my building, I like to illustrate sort of a, a story that you can say. You know, someone was here in this building, and now they're gone. Or there's a skeleton over there. Well, maybe that, that was that person. And I think if you want to make a good build, there has to be a, a story there. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, like, in my current gothic build, you know, it's a lot about color. And, obviously, I'm going to make stuff gray and kind of abandoned looking like dark wood colors and you know like scattered rocks maybe a little bit of crumbling and stuff so yeah it's all about like 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 i said how i added like crumbling rocks as stuff for details that kind of goes into the design you know design goes into the ambience of a park obviously and yeah, yeah absolutely and i uh, something i brought up earlier is that there's a certain difference between you know, a decent builder and a great builder in that a decent builder can figure out what they want to build, but a great builder can tell you why they put that there. And we talked about this in the context of the bunker, right? So the I put my armory uh, next to my entrance because I wanted people, and I talked about this in the video, because I want people to be able to quickly defend the bunker. So what did I put there? I put the armory. and But why? Why is it there? Because, you know, things in the real world, when a designer goes to design a building, they have to put rooms in their places for their specific purpose. So I think it adds uh, an element of realism if you can not only say, you know, what am I putting in where, but also why. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually one of the really, like, just purely productive, like, I mean... This challenge also has like a learning aspect to it, which is really good. Like it teaches you to add meaning behind your builds. If the person can hopefully interpret that from this, like obviously in a bunker, you're gonna have to have certain functions. You can't just make a super detailed thing and expect it to be like, like you can't just make a super detailed tunnel with like nothing in it. Like that would, you wouldn't be able to survive in a, um, an apoc apocalyptic like situation. And that's almost what I did. I almost just <laughs> yeah. went for like pure detail. Yeah, and I think, like I said before, detail is impressive, but it's that sort of passion or the sort of, you know, thought behind it that you can see that really brings it all together. Mm -hmm. When you get good enough, you can obviously just fabricate designs, but you're going to lose inspiration pretty quick. You got to have like, you got to have inspiration and passion behind it for a project to really turn out. So that's another way you can tell a project had passion. So if it's actually finished. Yeah. And I think that, I think the, the whole story behind the abandoned city is something that actually helped me finish because, you know, it's a, when you build a story behind your park, you get more invested in it and you want to see it sort of be finished. And I think there's a there's also a certain aspect. I mean, I could talk as someone who has finished parks and also scrapped parks before. Sometimes you just sort of have to build something, even if you don't know what. I mean, don't just start building uh, nonsense. But there there gets a certain point in a in a build where you've built so much and you've invested so much in it that you sort of feel like you have to finish it. And I feel like that's the point I got. And I also talked about earlier, because in my abandoned build project, I, uh, my friend Pipo Super helped me out. And because we both started it together, we both designed it together, we both felt like, for each other's sake, not just our own sake, that we had to finish it together. And I felt like that really helped me, you know, finish that whole build. Mm -hmm. And that's really good. That's probably one of the reasons I haven't finished something yet, because I haven't forced myself, which you don't want to force build, but like, 
generally you shouldn't lose inspiration so quickly that yeah. like like if you lose inspiration too quickly on a project i'd probably suggest not deleting it but just like make a new one and then you can come back to the idea you had especially if it was a really great one yeah i mean everyone gets you know the writers burned block, out or something. you know whatever the equivalent of that is for building and sometimes the solution is just to build something. You don't even have to build it in your own plot. Maybe just make something new, try something out. Maybe it'll, you know, rustle your brain around and then get it back to a point where you get inspired. It might not, but I think I, I found that to be very helpful for me. It's just sort of building things, even when I don't have inspiration for it. And yeah, like you said, and to be honest. Yeah, you, you don't want to, like, build something uninspired but yeah you can go you can go uh, uh what were you gonna say oh um yeah i was gonna say how uh this bunker project which i love like i love the idea has really like helped me with that like i've started working on my own park again because i'm also inspired to do this and it just kind of got me back into building so thanks yeah and i would i would absolutely love to see you you know finish something as good as your designs are, I feel like if you could put, like I talked about, a sort of story together with your level of skill, that would be, that would be like a, a top 10 park for me. Seriously. Thank you. I, and I think, um, I think it's a good place to wrap this up. I think this has been a really productive interview talking about the creative process. Um, do you have anything else to say? Oh, uh, I mean... Thanks for hosting me. I hope that you guys like found like some got some useful tips from this, you know, about like how to get inspiration for designs or ideas and like maybe you can relate to some of the experiences that we've had, you know. We we would probably love to hear about that in the comments. So uh yeah, yeah thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, all Good right. Good questions. All right, yeah. Hopefully we can do more of these. If any of you uh have a sort of theme park journey you want to tell, you know, let me know. Uh, DM me on Discord. I've got all my links in the description. And also, I'll, I mean, I know you say you won't upload anything. I'll link your channel. Or do you, would you rather have, like, your Roblox profile linked? I could link that. Uh, yeah, probably my Roblox profile for now. Thanks, man. All right, yeah, I'll link that. Uh, thanks for being mm -hmm. here and talking with me. And uh, mm -hmm. that'll be the episode. See you guys. Yeah. Have a good day.